chapter 27 looks at further integration and then some a couple of differential equations. We're going to start out looking at a couple of properties that were given involving arc sine and arc tangent. And these properties are given to us in the text and your formula packet, but we're going to use one of them to find this integral, 5 over x squared plus a squared dx. A would be a constant, and using the formula pack, or the text, we see that this is equal to 5 over a times the arc tangent of x over a plus c. And to develop, to, to develop this idea, we can look at, sort of working backwards, look at y equals the arc tangent of x over a. That can be rewritten as x equals a times the tangent of y. And that also implies that the tangent of y is equal to x over a. And if we take the derivative here of x with respect to y, what we get is a secant squared y. And substituting a Pythagorean identity, we use this And then taking our idea from right here, we can substitute that a times 1 plus x squared over a squared is equivalent to that. And then 1 is the same thing as a squared over a squared. And simplifying this out, we get a squared plus x squared divided by a. So that's dx dy. That means that dy dx, the derivative of arctangent x over a with respect to x, is a, a constant, over x squared plus a squared. And that constant is the denominator of what we're taking the arctangent of. Some substitutions that we can make to help integration a little easier, to make some of this stuff works. If we have the square root of a function, it's often a good idea to make a u substitution where u is equal to that function under the square root. If we have a natural log of x, it's oftentimes a good idea to let u equal the natural log of x. If we have the square root of a squared minus x squared, what we're going to want to do is let x equal a sine theta. If we have x squared plus a squared, or square root of x squared plus a squared, we're going to want to make x equal to a tangent theta. And if we have square root of x squared minus a squared, we let x take on a secant theta. And we'll do an example here that involves one of these last three. We're used to these first couple, but these are a little bit different. So here we have the integral of x times the square root of x plus 2. We have the square root of a function here. We might want to let u be that stuff underneath there. That means that du is equal to 1 dx.
But you might look at this and say, wait a minute, we still have x here. Well, that's okay, because we can make a little rearrangement here and say that if u is equal to x plus 2, then x is equal to u minus 2. Now I have an integral involving u. And I'm going to distribute and write these u's as powers. And now we integrate. And then as with all u substitutions, the last piece is to resubstitute and get ourselves back in terms of our original var variable. And there's our finished product. In this one, this fits with this x squared minus a squared. a in our problem is 3. So what we're going to do is say that x is going to become 3 secant theta. And dx d theta is equal to 3 secant theta tangent theta. And then a couple other things we can pull from this is that the secant of theta is equal to x over 3. Therefore, the cosine of theta is equal to 3 over x. And it's going to be helpful for us to think about a triangle with this. Adjacent side of 3, hypotenuse of x, opposite side being x squared minus 9 square rooted. And you'll see why this is useful in a minute. So now I'm going to come back here and I'm going to make some substitutions. Integral of the square root of 9 secant squared theta minus 9 over 3 secant theta. And from up here, dx is equal to 3 secant theta tangent theta d theta. And you may look at this and say, wait a minute, that's not very nice. That doesn't help us. But actually it does. Because the 3 secants cancel out. And then under this square root, we can factor out a 9 we don't have a denominator anymore this becomes 3 times the tangent of theta times tan theta d theta I made a Pythagorean identity substitution here. Secant squared theta minus 1 is equal to the tangent of theta. So this tangent squared and the square root of that is just going to be tangent. 
So now I have three tangent squared theta d theta. And I'm going to use that same Pythagorean identity one more time to say that this is equal to the integral of 3 secant squared theta minus 3 d theta. And the integral of secant squared is just tangent. Now we need to make some substitutions. And I'm going to come back to my triangle here. This is angle theta. The tangent of theta is equal to the square root of x squared minus 9 divided by 3, opposite over adjacent. Well, I can substitute that here. 3 times tangent is going to become the square root of x squared minus 9, the 3's cancel, minus, now I can come to this statement right here and say that theta in its simplest form is equal to the arc cosine of, x, of 3 over x. That's just some basic trigonometry. So minus 3 times the arc cosine of 3 over x plus c. And this is our finished answer. These substitutions that we make, these trig substitutions that we make for x, we'll always be able to do some little manipulations like this and stuff is going to become nice. It's going to become an integral that we can take. But you're going to have to think about this triangle up here and what relationships you can draw from it. Now, for integration by parts, if we have the integral of u times the derivative of v dx. That's equal to u times v minus the integral of u prime v dx. When we're deciding what u and v prime should be, we need to consider which piece, which part of our original function would be easy to differentiate and which piece would be easy to integrate. And when we look at this last part here, when we look at building this new integral, this new integral, u prime v, that should be nicer than the original integral we had, not more complicated. So let's look at, ex at an example here. I'm going to show this to you two different ways. We'll start off by saying, okay, we'll let u be the cosine of x. And we'll let v prime equal x. Because x is easy to integrate. So that means that v would be equal to 1 half x squared. And u prime, the derivative of u with respect to x, would be negative sine x. u is easy to differentiate, v prime was easy to integrate. Cool. So using the property of what integration by parts is, we'd have u times v, so we'd have 1 half x squared cosine x minus 
u prime v. So it would become plus one half times the integral of x squared sine x dx. And if you look at that, we've made this more complicated than the original integral was. Now we have x squared. So we haven't done ourselves any favors by going at the problem that way. So we need to maybe consider this the other way around. Let's let u equal x and v prime equal cosine x. Well that means that v is going to be sine x, u prime is going to be 1, so u times v is x sine x minus the integral of u prime times v, so 1 times sine x dx. And you'll notice now that this integral has gotten much simpler. The integral of sine x is negative cosine x, so just plus cosine x plus c. If a u substitution isn't going to work, and one of those substitutions from earlier on isn't going to work, a lot of times this is able to be done by integration by parts, but there has to be two pieces. Or maybe one of the two pieces is equal to 1. That's something you have to keep in mind too. So here is the assignment for A, B, and C. Part D in the text deals with miscellaneous integration problems. It's a whole variety of different problems, different methods that we've looked at throughout these chapters for you to get a sampling from. So it's a good idea to start working on those in addition to these problems, in addition to the problems that I give you in the next section.